What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Toyota Camry Hybrid, courtesy of Younger Toyota in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we are in this one today because of course, the Camry is known for legendary reliability. There is no exception with the hybrid. It's still insanely reliable. You do get two years or 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance as well with all new Toyotas for that matter and the Camry Hybrid is capable of 50 plus MPGs which is nuts so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering fuel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 camry hybrid first one being the le starting at 28,855, se for thirty thousand three hundred ninety dollars se nightshade for thirty one thousand three hundred ninety xle for thirty three seven forty five and lastly the xse which is the one we are in today going for thirty four thousand two hundred ninety five dollars but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant is going to be the same on the camry hybrid powering the Beast is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder with an electric motor, putting out a combined 208 horsepower, 163 pound feet of torque. That power being sent to the front wheels through an ECVT, zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.4 seconds. MPG numbers are going to differ a little bit depending upon the trim level that you go with. So 51 in the city, 53 in the highway for the LE, but all other trim levels are going to give you 44 in the city, 47 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the camry hybrid what an image to you guys the drive modes of course there's some buttons located directly behind the shifter drive modes will include eco normal sport and ev adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity so now i've got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 toyota camry hybrid here up to speed all right you guys so before we do this uh acceleration test i did want to first mention there are paddle shifters as well and there is a full manual shift mode if you slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left so we are going to test out those paddle shifters while we actually do the acceleration to kind of see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react for us so having said that i do have it in sport driving mode here in three two one go Oh, it's a CVT. Duh. <laughs> All right, so it doesn't really feel like you're shifting through anything, unfortunately, because, you know, it's paddle shifters and this is a CVT. So anyways, it definitely feels like a CVT. As far as acceleration goes, there was a nice little initial bump of power thanks to the electric motor on the Camry Hybrid, but other than that, it's not the quickest thing in the world. It'll certainly get the job done though. You're not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. So I do like that initial punch with the Camry Hybrid without a doubt, but to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 11 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 is your stopping distance goes, that comes in at 128 feet, which is pretty average for the segment but as far as braking feel goes since there is nobody behind us right now it's actually a very firm braking feel i like it we came to a pretty harsh stop there i really like that so didn't know what to expect with a camry hybrid because sometimes with hybrids you get these weird spongy braking feels but with the camry it actually feels pretty nice so definitely brings you to an instant stop then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars but with the se trim levels you're also going to get sport tuned shock absorbers and springs as well which is pretty cool so overall as far as ride quality goes it's been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today i haven't had any issues it's pretty much what you would expect the camry to ride like it's absorbing the road imperfections pretty nicely so i actually like it as far as steering feel goes i'm an eco driving man let me put it back in sport for a split second it is a noticeable difference it's a much heavier steering feel in that sport driving mode so i guess you could say the camry hybrid is something for everybody because in terms of steering feel goes so it's a much heavier feel in the sport much loosey-goosey steering feel in the eco driving mode as far as cabin noise goes 
I got my jacket rattling against the door right here for some reason, but other than that, it's not doing too bad. You get a little bit of engine noise when you really get on it, but other than that, it's a pretty serene cabin um, for what the Camry is. And there is an acoustic laminated front windshield, by the way, that comes standard for all trim levels across the board. So that's definitely gonna assist with uh, lack of cabin noise as well. So I do like that. As far as uh, visibility goes, looking at my rear view mirror, I can see perfectly fine out the back. I've never had any issues with rear visibility in the camera. So that's 100% on point. But in addition to that, there is actually a head-up display available as an option for only the XLE hybrid. So that's gonna project your speed, speed limit and safety features up onto your windshield. Of course, we don't have it with us here today, but it is available if you really wanted it. So that's pretty cool. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Toyota Camry Hybrid. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Toyota Camry Hybrid finished in midnight black metallic. In case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had on this one here today. As always, let's go ahead and start with where the Camry Hybrid is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number four, indicating that the Camry Hybrid is built and assembled here in the US. But let's now go ahead and start up front. You will find either a gray, a black, or a dark gray front grille, depending upon the trim level that you go with. So lots of different options there. That's pretty cool. Of course, you got the blue highlighting on the Toyota logo, uh, signifying that this is the hybrid version of the Camry. To the sides, by LED headlights with LED daytime running lights do come standard. Do you get the automatic feature with them? You also get the automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night, in the sense the vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up the high beams for you there so very convenient feature there you are going to find a more aggressive front grill if you were to go with the se trims or the you know the xse that we have today as well comparatively speaking to the le trim level so a little more sportier looks i guess you could say for our xse and also clear or dark headlight housings depended upon those two as well but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Camry Hybrid. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, chrome window surrounds do come standard. You will find body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated on the SE trim level and up, and you will get integrated turn signals as well for that SE trim level and up. Then taking a look down at the wheel setup, you have five different configurations for five different trim levels. So the wheels are all gonna be different. It's kind of interesting. So 16 inch steel wheels with covers for the LE, 18 inch black machine finished alloys for the SE trim, 19 inch TRD bronze alloys for the SE nightshade. You gotta love those. 18 inch dark gray machine finished alloys for the XLE and lastly 19 inch gloss black alloys for our XSC trim level that we have with us here today. So that's kind of interesting how they went with the different wheel configuration for every single trim level. But nonetheless, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Camry, all the way to the top, you will find a body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that, you actually will find a rear spoiler for the SE trim level. So our XSE is going to get one. So it's pretty cool. Once again, you got the blue highlighting on the Toyota logo since it's a hybrid if you weren't completely sure from that you got the hybrid badging found on the rear trunk there as well led taillights though do come standard for all trim levels across the board so you gotta love that then make your way all the way down to the bottom here you will find a single exhaust outlet for all trims but if you go with the se trims you're going to get those dual chrome tips like we have today so having said that this is a hybrid we're still going to give it a shot though as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Camry Hybrid here, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob. There is a button on the trunk then itself as well. Once opened up though, cargo capacity comes in at 15.1 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. But I always love seeing the grocery bag hooks in Camrys because that's more of an SUV feature. You usually don't find it on sedans, but they are back there. So that's pretty cool. Got some cargo net attachments 
lights back there. There are LED cargo lighting. That's an available option for a whopping 25 bucks. So if you wanted some LEDs in the cargo area, that's available to you. Then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire, which I always love to see. So then making our way to the rear legroom that comes in at 38 inches even. For reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard. You're gonna find some front seat back mat pockets as well. Rear ventilation, also found that back there. So always big fan of that. And as far as charging ports go, none of those. I didn't find any of those, unfortunately. I think they should probably add them because I knew the like the Sonata and the Kia K5 have those, but anyways, they make our way up to the front seats, eight-way power driver's seat with power lumbar for all trim levels, fabric seating for the LE, soft text upholstery for the SE trims, full leather seating though for the XLE and XSE trim levels, and then heated front seats for those two as well, the XLE and the XSE. Overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it was plenty fine, so no issues there. Not the, not like Lexus F Sport good, but it's certainly comfortable for me. I didn't have any issues, but then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping, and it's gonna be leather wrapped for the SE trim level and up, and then heated steering wheel is gonna actually be optional for all trim levels. We do have that option, so I like the heated steering wheel that we have on this one here today but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your toyota camry lettering on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock and of course that button to pop the rear trunk but it is all keyless entry with a bright blue push button start that's pretty cool so i'm just going to put my foot in the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the uh, air vents there so once started up, when it comes to the gauge cluster, you're gonna have all your eco indicators found all the way to your left, speedometers on your right, and there's a fairly large digital screen front and center. You do have steering wheel mount controls on the left side to control what is on there. So plenty of stuff you could check out though, including the time of day, your drive modes, of course, outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, there's your radio information, safety features, pretty much everything you could possibly want up there, more or less. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality, a power moon is going to be optional for all trim levels we got that option so absolutely love that that's pretty cool home light control also going to be optional for all trim levels we also have that option that's for up to three different garage doors found in the rear view mirror there looks like they did away with the overhead sunglass holder that i remember seeing at least on the non-hybrid trim level so that's kind of interesting i don't see that up there but anyways dual zone climate control does come standard for all trim levels across the board wireless phone charger for the xle and xse trim levels ambient interior lighting as well and i do love this kind of carbon fiber look although it's just plastic found just above the passenger side glove box it's a pretty cool look to it i like how this uh kind of chrome door handle this chrome plastic door handle continues on across the door as well that looks pretty good just beside the shifter you do have a couple cup holders of course heated seat buttons are right behind that within the center armrest it's actually a decent amount of storage in there more so than you're used to seeing in cars and you got a couple usb charging ports in there as well so that's pretty nice so overall it'll certainly get the job done here in the uh the elbow rest during my drive was plenty fine as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here there's a couple of them seven inch color touchscreen display is going to come standard on all trim levels but the xle and xse essentially because those two trims are going to give you what you're looking at which is a nine inch color touchscreen display either way you still get bluetooth and audio streaming you still get android auto apple carplay factory navigation system is going to be optional for the xle and xse trim levels you could check out your driving statistics up there as well and since i probably didn't say it yet by the way i managed uh 47 miles per gallon in my short little test drive here today so the epa numbers for this trim level were right on point but also you could check out your radio information up there as well and so when it comes to the sound system there is one of them it is a six speaker sound system coming standard for all trim levels across the board so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one i gotta be honest one of the better six speaker sound systems that i typically am used to hearing there was a decent amount of bass in that clarity was actually perfectly fine for six speakers as well so for me i don't have any issues with that sound system of course there are better ones out there but that's pretty darn good for a six speaker sound system. But last thing I wanna to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least, is when you do put the Camry Hybrid in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Not the highest quality camera out there, but it'll certainly get the job done. And that is always, it's going to lead us into safety. And so IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, 
Well, I did start by saying that because that's the very highest designation given by IIHS that pretty much says all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. You also get rear seat side impact airbags. That's like a seven or $800 option with BMW and Mercedes I know. Also in the back, you got latch, AKA lower angles and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 Plus. That gives you a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert with steering assist, lane tracing assist, road sign assist, and dynamic radar cruise control. Then if you were to go with the XLE or XSE trims, you're also going to get a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Camry, incredible reliability that has been known for quite a while and that does include the hybrid vehicles i remember reading an article not too long ago about a highlander hybrid that went over a million miles somewhere in florida near the everglades so that is incredible the fact that hybrids can hold up that long so gotta love that excellent safety as well like i said you can't beat an ihs top safety pick plus so that says it all right there you get brilliant miles per gallon i managed 47 there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever as far as room for improvement goes the front end design is kind of meh in my opinion and uh the gauges do look a bit outdated as well so really the question i got for you guys is you guys know it next year the next model year for the camry is going to be the refresh uh really it's just the front end more or less and uh, some other stuff as well so do you buy this one now and get incredible miles per gallon still or do you wait for the 2025 camry refresh and go with that one let me know in the comments section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.